Good. Good morning. Welcome to your Tuesday morning briefing. Here's what you need to know to start your day with your host, former Saturday Night Live superstar Joe Piscopo. Produced by Frank Morano with news guy Al Gotulo and traffic with Debbie Duhame. This is the Joe Piscopo Show on AM 970. The answer. Pandemic 2020. Pandemic 2020. Got questions about the coronavirus? Call now, 877-970-2999 and talk to the experts. Yeah, give us a call. Joe on the radio. Good morning to you uh, on AM 970. The answer six minutes after nine o'clock. It's March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. All the very best on this St. Patrick's Day. So proud to have you listening. So proud to have you uh, gather around our virtual kitchen table. And it's got to be virtual now. This is the medium that you want to be uh, with uh, radio where I guess uh, people don't have to, you know, be here. We could talk to you, you know, through the uh, microphones. And it's so funny because I was going to go over to some uh, news uh, hits and do some TV hits, but they didn't want people in the studio. So, and if you saw the five on Fox yesterday, they were like separated. They were separated, you know, social distancing. So very interesting time. So we're here for you. That's what I'm saying. We're here for you. 877-970-2999. Uh, that is, you could give us, give us a call. And I see the calls are up already. I'll go there momentarily, but I want to welcome, if I may, Dr. Stephen Greer is a, a practicing surgeon pioneering how hospitals care for the elder but he also is a Wall Street analyst and portfolio manager uh, that he did. He started that 20 years ago. Uh, Dr. Greer, so great of you to join us this morning. Thank, thanks for jumping on the air with us, sir. Hey, my pleasure. Well, well I, we, and we, got, we got folks with questions, but I got to ask you, you're, you're both a medical doctor and a Wall Street analyst? Uh, yeah, I was uh, at uh, NYU. Uh, I was a finance major in college. I was I came to New York to do surgery, plastic surgery, and so forth training at NYU. And uh, year 2000, 20 years ago, went to work for Credit Suisse as an analyst. So I would write all of those research reports on uh, these stocks, and I followed the biotech and medical device sector. And then I became uh, what they call the sell side, where I was managing money. And then my uh, uh, eventually was the portfolio manager at Merrill Lynch, and wow. uh, where for the entire company I would give advice. Now, the reason I mention that is I've seen these pandemics many times uh, under that role. So I remember in 05, we had the SARS and the swine flu and the bird flu. And so I've been following these, uh, advising uh, the companies. I'm still giving Goldman Sachs traders their advice, that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, so I have some experience here. And, and what's happening and the way this is being handled is absolutely unprecedented. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure it's an overreaction. I tend to think it is. Hmm. But we'll never know. We'll never know yeah, because if, yeah. if the virus turns out to be nothing, they'll say, oh, we prevented it. Um, and, you know, so so it's, yeah. it's uh, one thing's for sure. If you want to stop a pandemic, just completely shut down a country. Well, you can't do that. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, I mean, I, every year people die and uh, from all sorts of things, the common cold and the flu. So so this it, I don't know if it's an option to shut down a country to stop an unknown risk. Yeah, but as a doctor, Dr. Greer, it's a great point that you make, by the way. And I see your phone calls. Hold right there. Uh, I know you have a, a question for Dr. Greer. I'm going to go to the calls, 877-970-2999 in a second. Uh, indeed, are we overreacting? I mean, when you, I look at the numbers of a flu. I look at uh, 800,000 suicides every year. I mean, every 40 yep. seconds, someone takes their life. Yep. I mean, is, is that not a more pandemic as well? From, more people have died every day from opioid overdoses than this yeah, entire flu exactly. of 85 cases. So you've got to put it in perspective. And as a nation, can you shut down a nation for 85 deaths? Now, see, what I don't know and what no one will know, and it's impossible to know, is mm -hmm. are they getting ahead of the curve and preventing a mass slaughter like the 1918 yeah. uh, the Spanish flu? Yeah. Or are they overreacting? And they will never be able to say that they overreacted because they're just going to take credit for it and say, oh, we prevented it. Yeah, it's impossible yeah. to say. Based on the data we see now, it certainly doesn't seem to be uh, that bad at all. So um, I, I think the smart thing would have been to take the people at risk, which is not everybody, which is mm -hmm. the sick people with cancer or elderly, yeah. and make them stay at home and sequester them. 
that would have been the smarter thing to do. But now we've got this uh, baby out with the bathwater, all one size fits all. Uh, and and in the, the young kids know, the millennials or whatever, they know this is BS, and they're out there partying on Miami Beach. I know, man. I couldn't believe I saw that. Well, well, as an expert in both, what's great? What's a greater concern: uh, the public health damage or the economic damage, sir? Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is not just money. Like Tucker Carlson said this last night, it was my same thoughts. Is uh, this isn't just hurting Wall Street traders? This is much more That's impacting right. Right. every Joe Schmo who works as a bartender, barback, uh, construction. It's going to devastate hundreds of millions of people and they can't won't be able to pay their electric bill you know that yeah. and then it's going to very soon could lead to public unrest riots and so forth very soon now that's where you're going to see some craziness okay yeah. so uh what, what drives me crazy if you want my opinion I, is, is anthony fauci is this face of coronavirus he's 79 years old like most of the politicians so they are at risk I think they are emotionally involved because they're scared for themselves. Anthony Fauci gets – he's not an elected official. He's not a policymaker. He doesn't run the CDC. He's never been elected to anything. And he gets up to that podium that he can barely see over and with extreme hubris – with extreme hubris and contempt for us stupid people says, oh, we've carefully modeled this. Let me tell you something. I'm a Wall Street analyst. I know how to forensically analyze New England Journal papers. I can tell you he's pulling that out of his ass. They have no model for this. It is guesswork. And no one questions him because our country is illiterate in math and everything else. You know, So all you are, Dr. Fauci, and I model this, so you shut up. Oh, really? Show me how you modeled it, Dr. Fauci. Put your spreadsheet on there. You know. So I think it's a bluff. I think it's being misguided by Anthony Fauci, and I think Anthony Fauci needs to be removed. Dr. Burke, that lady, Dr. Burke, is ten times better of a spokesperson. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, hey, you know, you know, I don't want. Listen, we're so transparent on the show, Dr. Greer. That you are, you are great, man. I got to tell you something. This is this is your radio show, brother. I mean, this is great because <laughs> I thought the same thing. And hold the calls, hold the calls. But I got to go here. I got to go here because I'm so transparent and honest with the audience. And it's been, I think, but with great humility, I say the success of the program because we are that honest. I thought the same thing, and I don't, I don't, and I, I, I'm. I just I don't want to say anything bad about Dr. Fauci because he is the voice of it, and he. But is is he? And I ask you, Dr. Greer, because you know this. To your point, I just felt he was like so negative and so over dramatizing yeah, it that I thinks, feared that he was scaring here's people. Here's what he's huh? doing. He thinks he's being tough and decisive by saying the the worst case scenario. Dr. Fauci is always saying the worst case scenario. Well, we don't know how bad it'll be. This could last for six months. Yeah, saying yeah. the worst case scenario is not what a policymaker in front of national TV should say. See, he's a dorky scientist and he's not a he's not <laughs> trained for this. And Dr. Burke should be the voice. And by the way, yeah. they brought Dr. Burks on because between you and me, they're, they're, they're demoting Fauci for this very reason. So Doc, President Trump needs to yank Fauci. He shouldn't be on TV. Get him out of there. He doesn't know how to speak. By saying the worst case scenario, he's doing nothing but scaring the total spineless wusses like Anthony, like, like, uh, like uh, uh, Cuomo and, and, and all these people. Man. It's a domino effect. When he Man. speaks, the, the yeah. weasel spineless governors <laughs> act, and yeah, he set yeah, off a whole yeah. domino effect. So you think when Dr. I want to stay on this, and then we'll move to the questions, if we may, sir. Dr. Stephen Greer, a practicing surgeon, uh, pioneering how a hospital cares for the elderly and a Wall Street analyst. So I because I thought when when Dr. Fauci and he, I, I like he's an Italian, so I got to give the guy credit. We we need all the help we could get as Italian-Americans, you know, so I'm going like, hey, it's an Italian guy. But I didn't see when he stepped up yesterday. I wanted to hear him say, thank you, Mr. President. He never said that once. That kind of bothered me yeah. a little bit. I wonder if. If there is a little dissension going on. Let that me tell day. you. Let me tell you. People need to understand Dr. Fauci. He works at the NIH. He's been there way too long. He's seventy-nine years old. The NIH is not this research body that everybody thinks it is. The NIH takes money from your taxpayer and then doles it out as welfare yeah. for Harvard yeah. and all these Ivy Leagues. I've yeah. done clinical trials. I've done multi-center trials myself. I know what I'm talking about. No one knows this. But when you get a, quote, research grant, 60% or more of that is what they call overhead. It's pure pork 
welfare to Harvard or whoever's doing the study. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and that they live on that. The entire budget of Harvard, not just the medical school, the entire budget of Harvard, I think, gets like 30 percent of its money from the NIH. So wow. Dr. Fauci is a Dr. Fauci is a money man. He's been controlling his little fiefdom. I, I, this beyond the scope of this conversation, but the NIH needs to be reformed. Okay. Oh, so, man, so we, is, oh yeah. yeah. No, we'll have to get there. Dr. Stephen Greer fired up this morning on the Piscopo Show, 915. Stay with you us. It's I'm a- angry? You know what, why I'm what, angry? Why is that, they're sir? Stopping my, they're stopping the masters. Yeah. Ah, there you go. They, I can't. I can't believe that. And baseball too. I'm a baseball guy. What's going on <laughs> with the baseball? I, I hear you, uh, Doctor Stephen. Hold it, uh, Doctor Stephen Greer. Let me go to Phyllis, if I may, in New York. Phyllis, thank you for calling. Do you have a question for Doctor Greer? Uh, yes, I have a question. Okay. Yesterday, they announced all the underlying problems that can occur with elderly or sickly. Okay. Now, they didn't mention Parkinson's. I have Parkinson's. Okay. Would you know if I, that would be in the category underlying problems? Okay, Phyllis, thanks for calling. Does Parkinson's, that, that would be an underlying uh, disease for the elderly, correct, Dr. Greer? Uh, not as much as others, but Parkinson's does have systemic effects. So, yes, they, I mean, in general, anyone over 70 or an arbitrary age picket is, is going to be someone that should take this seriously. I want to emphasize that. Yeah, There's definitely yeah. certain people who should take this very seriously. And if I were Anthony Fauci at age 79 or anyone else of a certain age or if I just recovered from cancer, I would be at home. I would not be going to sporting events. I would have social distancing. Yes, yes. And, okay. and that's the way you do it. Right, but you've mentioned I, I'm this expert and in, in elderly. It just coincidentally just so happens that I treat elderly in nursing homes uh, with a specialty in wounds. So I go out to bedside and treat bed sores, that sort of thing. So I know wow. the nursing home, and, wow. and I've been doing that. That clinical trial I mentioned, which I did in 1998 with a yeah. government grant, that was me going around to nursing homes. So so that, that's my background here. We, wow. And, and, and this, this virus, uh, Dr. Gear, how does it differ, your approach to it, how does it differ from, from approaching with like SARS, for example, or e- Ebola? Uh, you, well, well I, I, I don't know. I, I can tell you how it's being approached now is absolutely unprecedented, okay? Ebola was a much deadlier virus and much more contagious. And when Obama handled that in 2014, he still let people fly in from Congo, you know? So, so they didn't do anything yeah. for Ebola. Yeah. Uh, SARS, same thing. So, so the reaction now is either finally the correct one. All I can tell you is it's completely out of the norm over the last modern history, 50 years or whatever. So is this going to set a horrible precedent every two years, every election cycle that the people in charge are going to be so scared that they've got to now follow Mm. this template and shut down everything? That's what I'm concerned about. We're going to see this in two years. In 2022, we're going to have another viral shutdown. And and, uh, well, uh, Dr. Stephen Greer, let me go to Rich, if I can, uh, call, calling at 877-970-2999. And we have doctors, uh, doctor questions for uh, Dr. Stephen Greer, if you would. And, uh, Rich, what's uh, your question for the doctor this morning? Yeah, hi, Dr. Greer. Yeah, from what I understand, uh, the coronavirus, this thing is going to, like, evaporate once the very, very hot, steamy weather uh, comes about. I always thought that cold weather killed germs and, you know, stopped things from festering. So that's kind of like a contradiction. What do you think about that? Well, we don't know that for sure at all. We're guessing. Typically, most coronaviruses are are, are, are more uh, prevalent in cold weather, seasonal, that sort of thing. And the reason for that is cold weather is dry. So your heater and so forth, humidity. So your 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 um, Mucus linings in your nose and, and, and oropharynx uh, become more susceptible, I believe, is the main reason you see problems like uh, nasal colds and so forth mm-hmm. in the cold weather. And we're guessing that's how this virus behaves. Well, we don't know. This is a whole new strain, so it, it, it's guesswork. That's why they, that's why Anthony Fauci, and he said, we don't know. It's a new virus. This could go on for six months. Well, gee, thanks. It could also go on for two weeks. We don't yeah. know. Dr. Stephen Greer with us. Let me go to our dear listener, Viviana, one of our favorite listeners. Viviana, always great to hear from you. Do you have a question for the doctor? Yes, I do. Thank you, Dr. Greer. Um, Once a surface is contaminated with coronavirus, 
I've been told in briefings it, it is active only two to three minutes, but I've read that others say that it can last for two or three hours. What is the truth? And then should we wear a mask or no mask? Thank you so much for these, uh, this briefing. Uh, I'll, a- I'll answer the mask question. The answer to the uh, how long does the virus last is I've not heard any credible data from any basic science lab at the CDC actually give that answer. So I think everything you're hearing is speculation and guesswork. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. The, the right people to tell us that would be Dr. Fauci. That's what he should be talking about, not policy question, but Dr. Fauci doesn't tell us that. Um, Matt, yes, absolutely wear a mask. I just came to New York and I saw nobody wearing a mask. The TSA, the people who interact with you at the airport are not wearing a mask or, or uh, gloves. Wow. Wow. And they don't have hand sanitizer. The government wow. agency really dropping the ball here is the TSA. They're not wearing Now, why should you wear a mask? Yeah, yes, yeah. it'll help a little bit with the air particles, even if it's just a run-of-the-mill mask. But it mostly prevents you from touching your face because it's impossible to not touch your face. We all do it. So yeah. it helps you. Pre- I, I always fly long before coronavirus with a mask because it helps you uh, not touch your face. And uh, so, yes, wear a mask and wear gloves. Wow. Uh, especially if you're in New York and you're on the subway and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Dr. Greer, I, 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 I don't want to be rude, but we'd love to hold you. Can you stay with us just a little couple more minutes? If we sure. can, we'll take a, sure. let's take a quick. Dr. Stephen Greer is with us. He's a surgeon, uh, Wall Street analyst. Uh, we're very fortunate to have this bright, bright gentleman with us, Dr. Stephen Greer. I see your questions. Hold the phones. We'll go there momentarily. Let's go to Susie on the roads right now. She's checking out traffic for you at 922 right here on AM 970, The Answer. Got questions about the coronavirus? Call now, 877-970-2999 and talk to the experts. Joe Piscopo on the radio, 927. We we have our new favorite person, Dr. Stephen Greer. This guy is awesome. I got to tell you, we, we absolutely love you, Dr. Greer. You got to and thank you for hanging in there. I mean, here's a practicing yeah. surgeon helping out the elderly, a Wall Street analyst, and speaking really from, uh, you know, from his heart. We appreciate you being with us. Can, can we grab a couple more questions for you before we let you sure. go, Dr. Greer? You know, thank you. Yes, sir. I, I, I forgot. I forgot to mention something very important that uh, it, that's not being mentioned in the media. The most Please. important agency in the government right now is the FDA. There are drugs to treat this, and they're not talking about it. So first of all, Gilead has remdesivir. It's an experimental drug. The FDA could approve it tomorrow uh, if they wanted wow. to. So look for that. And there's also – I'm not going to mention the name of it because people will go run and get it. There's another prescription medication already on the market used for a different indication. Um, so uh, now whether we have those in supply or not depends on whether they're coming from China. That's the other big story here is all of our drugs are coming from China, which is a disgrace. So after, all we, after we lose all these jobs with this pandemic, you know how you get a million of them back? You make everyone in the tri-state area, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Pfizer, et cetera, make their damn drugs in this country. Bravo. That's our man right there. God bless you. God bless you, Dr. Green. I've been saying it for six years on the radio. Make generic drugs do something. How do we break that chain from China? They're making And where are they making it? In Wuhan, where the virus comes from, for crying out loud. I mean, and how does yeah. this, by the way, we'll go to the questions in a second. Dr. Greer, how does that virus get? I always said it was just coincidental, you know, because the president starts going against and tariffs against China. And then all of a sudden, this virus surfaces. So if you're conspiratorial yeah. or neurotic or suspicious, like me of any government, and especially communist government, I'm thinking. It, 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 and again, let's let's say that it just accidentally got out. Why don't they get a handle on that that province of China where all these diseases are always coming from, sir? Um, well, that's a good point. This is not unusual. Every single year, the regular influenza starts in China. We then Ugh. base the vaccine upon that, and then the vaccine leaves here. So it's a cycle. Why it comes from China, uh, a lot of people close together, they interact with animals. I don't exactly know. But uh, but this coming from China is typical. Yeah. That's where most of the yeah. viruses come from. Yeah, Dr. 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 Stephen Green, let me, let me go to one of our favorite listeners, Judy uh, from Brooklyn. Judy, always great to hear from you. You have a question for Dr. Greer. Yeah, I do. Good morning, guys. And a great show, Joe, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Big Thank service you, that you're doing for all of us with Betsy as well. Dr. Greer, you sound amazing, and you have practical ideas and common sense. I love that. 
So, Dr. Greer, I want to ask you something that I heard and tell me what you think. Um, I was told that this virus does not like heat, okay, and that's why when people breathe in the cold air, it goes, the cold air goes into the lungs, it cools the lungs, that's the coolest part of the body, that's why it settles in the lungs. So they were saying if you feel anything symptoms, because right now, as you say, there are no medications for this, you know, your good old-fashioned grandma thing with the inhalation, you boil the water, you put a towel over, and you inhale the steam into the lungs to kind of kill this virus, which is a practical way of trying to kill it. What do you think? Well, actually, I said there are indeed, yes, there are drugs to treat this. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I hate to uh, poo-poo that, but I don't believe that would help at all. This, the, the virus isn't hot or cold. It, the seasonal effect is due to the cold, dry weather impairing our immune system and the nasal mucous uh, membranes and so forth. Um, it, it's not, uh, the virus itself doesn't care about the temperature. Um, so so the, that, that kind of stuff, uh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it would help. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, Doc, what's the drug you're thinking about that they oh, – they, it, it, it is not approved, you well, said, but there is a drug out there, yeah. correct? It's in trials out in uh, the first people out in, what, San Francisco, Washington. I forgot where – oh, oh, there actually was in uh, Nebraska where they were sending all the yeah. good people. Um, so it's under trials now. You, this could be the next big news story, like this week, next week, is that they approve it. It's made by Gilead. Uh, and it's REM Disappear, R E M D I S I V I R. And again, there's two others already sold, and I and I don't want to say that because it would be irresponsible, and a lot yeah. of people would be ordering it, and it would yeah. take the drug away from the people who need it. But let your doctor know. Say, hey, doc, isn't there something on the market right now? And they should they should know. Yeah, good, great. <laughs> Great. So, Dr. Greer, before we let you go, we have no more questions from uh, Joe in uh, in Jersey. Joe, you got a question for Dr. Greer? Good morning. I'll be very brief because I know you probably have a lot of calls backed up. Thank I'm an extra senior citizen, and my concern is this. Before I start rushing to a doctor or a hospital, uh, how high – one of the paramount things in mind is always a fever. How high a fever do I have to be concerned about? 100, 102, 101? I mean, at what point like, should I try and tough it out myself? Yeah, it's a good question. It's just a simple cold yeah. or something yeah. like that. What do you think, Dr. Well, Greer? first of all – avoid hospitals for a whole bunch of reasons. Number one, they, they don't watch it. They're overwhelmed. But much more importantly, hospitals are Petri dishes. They're, yeah. If you want to get an infection, go to a hospital. So yeah. uh, you'll walk out of the hospital sicker than when you went in. So try to avoid a hospital or an ER. And the fever for this, I've been told, is higher than the normal flu. So I would say 101 is something you should take seriously or higher. But it's mostly the symptoms. So it's not if you're sneezing or up in the upper head to say if you have cough, if you have shortness of breath and you're coughing up sputum, that's the main thing to look for. So uh, right. you can have a fever for a whole bunch of reasons. But if your lungs aren't affected, then it's probably not this. You know, Dr. Greer, we got more questions. People are emailing, and, and, but we're going to let you go because we appreciate your valuable time, sir. But it, it, does the infection, by the way, uh, long-term effects from the coronavirus, should it be something we should be worried about, sir? You mean like diminished lung capacity afterwards? Yes. Uh, I, I, we don't know yet. It's too soon, but it's probably like the flu, and you'll probably, probably recover. We, we don't know yet. Uh, there are other viruses where you have permanent damage, you know, ranging from going back to history to polio, but I mean, the Zika damages the nerves. But uh, I, we don't know. I tend to doubt it. It's probably like the flu yeah. uh, where your yeah. lungs will recover. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Stephen Greer, you got to you got to come back when you can, sir. We know how busy you are. Thanks for your help, especially with our elderly, our population. And we really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, just a great, great time with you uh, this half hour, Dr. Sure. Greer. God bless. My Godspeed. And, yes, sir. We'll talk soon. Dr. Stephen Greer, you know, practicing surgeon, pioneering how hospitals care for the elderly. He's working with our elderly and he's also a Wall Street analyst that we got. I'll tell you, Frankie, thank you. for. We got to bring him back, man. He's speaking the truth, the perfect for our program, and we thank Dr. Greer. And thanks for your questions as well. We're going to break right now. Uh, we're going to talk to Peter Kelly. You know what? We're going to get, get a little lighter when we come back after the news because uh, Peter Kelly is a chef and former Grand Marshal of the St. Patrick's Day Parade on McLean Avenue 